Okay, welcome back to members of uh, 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the Gospel of Mark. We're going to begin chapter 11 now. We're going to go to 11, 1 through 14, and we're going to look at uh, a parable in action, an enacted parable, the cursing of the fig tree, and it is associated with the uh, cleansing of the temple. Let's go to block one and take a look, look at the text. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back shortly. They went and found a colt outside the street, tied at a doorway. They untied it. Some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found he uh, went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say this. All right, we have a entry into Jerusalem, but then immediate exit from Jerusalem and the cursing of the fig tree. And it all is associated with uh, what will eventually happen cleansing of the temple, and so we, it's very interesting that we take a look at the commentary here and really understand what exactly is going on. Let's go to block two and take a look at the commentary. Okay, in block two, we're going to take a look at uh, Ruckman, see Luke 13, 6 through 9, concerning the curse, where it signifies delayed judgment of self-righteousness concerning the temple leaders. Genesis 3-7 tells us that fig leaves represented self-righteousness. See Paul in Romans 10-3, going about to establish their own righteousness, but they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Now under Edwards, in verse 11, we look at a complete anti-climax. The object of Christ's procession is specifically the temple and its operation. The moment of the Messianic kingdom is anticipated, it is expected, but that doesn't happen. Instead, we have the procession, examination of the temple, and then immediate departure. Verses 12 through 14 this is the only miracle of destruction in the Gospels. These verses have suffered various interpretations. As early as the 5th century, it was understood as a, an enacted parable. It was understood as an enacted parable. And the coming judgment to befall Jerusalem in A.D. 70. So it was a sign of coming judgment. As early as the 5th century, the cursing of the fig tree was considered a sign of the eventual 
coming judgment on Jerusalem and specifically the temple in A.D. 70. Uh, for Mark, the curse represents the coming judgment of an unfruitful temple. This episode has symbolic implications for Mark. The prophets often used the fig tree as a symbol of judgment. And that's the way that uh, Edwards looks at it. That's the way that uh, I think we should interpret it. Now I want to look at Hegel again. And this time I'm going to use the Greek concepts along with his triad. His triad is logic, uh, essence, and spirit. But for logic, it's the logos. For essence, it's idos, ideas or concepts. For spirit, it's prototemi, positing or setting forth a biblical worldview. So let's take a look at uh, Hegel's triad here, logic or the logos. The eternal logic is described here as the logic of the righteousness of God, see Romans 10.3. So the logic, God's logic in salvation history is the logic of the righteousness of God that will come to fruition, that will reach doxa glory. And we are to look at Romans 10.3 for that. Essence, or idas, ideas, this enacted parable is a sign for the upcoming cleansing of the temple. Here we find a new concept of judgment, crisis, and casting out ekbalo of those who are corrupting the temple. So we do get new concepts that we have to integrate into our worldview. The concept of judgment, the concept of casting out of those who are corrupting the temple. Under spirit, prototemi, the realm of absolute spirit includes our participation in the logic of God's righteousness where there is both sozo salvation and Croesus judgment. I'll read that again because that's really the summation of what we should gather here. The realm of absolute spirit includes our participation in the logic of God's righteousness where there is both sozo salvation and Croesus judgment. There is the possibility of both. So that's Hegel's triad of uh, logic, essence, and spirit, but with using the Greek as logos, idos, and prototemi. I inserted the Greek there, logos, Greek for logic, idos, Greek for the ideas or the concepts of the kingdom, and prototemi, Greek for positing or setting forth a biblical worldview, setting forth the gospel. So Hegel's triad is essentially logos, idos, prototemi, logic, essence, spirit. So we get to additional concepts because now we're looking at uh, judgment, but uh, we're actually looking at delayed judgment. In other words, this is a uh, this cursing of the fig tree is supposed to be coupled with the later uh, cleansing of the temple and the declaration by Christ later that one stone will not be on another, that the temple will be completely destroyed. And we know that this does happen in A.D. 70. Remember the date of Mark is 14 years after Galatians. The date of the Gospel of Mark is A.D. 64. Some people put it like around A.D. 68. I prefer A.D. 64. I think it deserves an earlier date. But uh, it's prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. It's dated prior to A.D. 70. It's dated prior to the, the destruction of the temple and the uh, destruction of Jerusalem by Rome. And cursing of the fig tree is a, a sign of this delayed judgment that will come upon 
a corrupt temple. That's what we're going to find out. It is a corrupt temple. Christ did enter Jerusalem, went straight to the temple. Then he, he observed its operation immediately. And then he turned around and uh, went back to Bethany, contemplating all the while the way the temple had been corrupted and uh, how much he must have hated seeing what he saw. And we know when he goes back, he is going to purge the temple. But uh, on the way back, he stops and curses a fig tree as a symbolic sign of the delayed judgment of the temple, the delayed judgment of Jerusalem, all to take place in A.D. 70. Let's go to block three and take a look at uh, the wording of the curse. It's verse uh, 11, 14. And he, Christ, said to it, to the fig tree, unto the age, in other words, from now on, may no one eat your fruit. And his disciples were comprehending what he said. They were considering what he said. They knew something significant was taking place here. Ekuan is comprehending, contemplating. The disciples contemplated what Christ was doing here. In a way, they already recognized this is a, an enacted parable. This is parable in action. This is a, an enacted parable. And this has a truth of symbolic depth of meaning. They were comprehending, contemplating what he said. It's a very, very powerful lesson, and it does give us a, a very good uh, look at uh, a sign. I guess the subtitle of this lesson should be A Sign of Delayed Judgment Against a Corrupt Temple That Truly Disturbed the Lord. He entered Jerusalem. He observed the temple operation. He observed its corruption. It had turned into a money-making business. And then he turned around, went straight back to Bethany, all the while considering the corruption he had just witnessed. Next day, we have the cursing of the fig tree, which is a symbolic sign of the eventual, eventual judgment against Jerusalem judgment against the temple in uh, AD 70 and Mark is dated around AD 64 this prophetic announcement by Christ is made around a I date Mark to around AD 64 about 14 years after Galatians some people go to 68 some go to 70 But for me, I prefer an early dating. I think uh, Mark is dated around A.D. 64, six years prior to the A.D. 70 destruction of the temple. But we have here a sign in the cursing of the fig tree of the eventual judgment against a corrupt temple, a corrupt temple operation a corrupt leadership in the temple. So we have a, a, a delayed, the sign of delayed judgment against Jerusalem in the cursing of the fig tree. That's going to wrap up 11, 1 through 14. We will continue in 11 next lesson, but that gets us uh, started in 11 on a, uh, the fact that Christ immediately observes a corrupt temple. That wraps up 11, 1 through 14.